often focus on participatory or co-design methods, effective evaluation and comms is essential. The range of skills and commitment to addressing need or supporting change making among practitioners is impressive. Yet, the fundamental importance of such outcomes and the added social and cultural value which can be created is not accommodated or integrated in the vast majority of archaeological interventions in the UK. The three domains could be described as representing key components of an archaeological system which activate archaeology through different processes and methods. This archaeological system has a fourth domain of government agencies and bodies who help set its parameters through legislation and policy. Our archaeological system has grown and developed due to a social contract that a common good resource, that is archaeological deposits, sites and collections, which belongs to all, will be looked after by us, the archaeological sector, as best we reasonably can, in the interests of wider society. And when we can't protect, preserve or conserve on behalf of current diverse interests and future generations, that appropriate measures will be put in place to ensure the loss of all significant potential values which can come through a common good resource are adequately compensated. <clears throat> so in one domain, we know that archaeological deposits and sites can be activated through design processes to create a range of outcomes and outputs in ways which can produce social and cultural value for a range of end users. In another domain which operates with reference to the polluter plays principle, archaeological deposits are destroyed to enable development with mitigation measures largely focused on creating technical reports and archives. Production of these outputs in essence deliver to obsolete academic models of practice which have historically privileged a limited range of outputs traditionally conceived as focus on knowledge production and subsequent opportunities for public education. So I would suggest that there is, and has been for many years, a significant misalignment between what we can produce in terms of public benefit from a public a common good and what the systemic structures of archaeological practice allow us to produce in, and more importantly, across different domains of practice. So in 2023, Grounded in the realities of global climate and biodiversity crisis, historically entangled with global economics with greater wealth disparity, while looking at overworked colleagues and forms of precarity or poor conditions in at least two domains of archaeological practice, looking at issues of injustice and priorities of widening participation in archaeology, and understanding the power of archaeological practice as a creative field of participatory collaboration, and looking at the need for hope and joy in the difficult life of so many people suffering from impacts of COVID and poverty, surely, surely there is a way we can deliver better together by working more effectively across the archaeological sector, by working systematically to change the model, to deliver to urgent short term need and shared long term goals. Seeking alignment, removing blockages and creating synergies through working more effectively across the different domains could be readily explored by the sector. And whether tools such as manifestos, a strategic framework or cross sector memoranda of understanding would help achieve shared focus, future focus, I will let you consider. In this messy 21st century set of realities, I would suggest we are faced with the need to make some significant strategic decisions about the archaeological sector's fundamental purpose our values and how we manifest them, and clearly refresh our social contract for the privilege of acting as gatekeepers, custodians, facilitators, enablers, activators to a common good. Thank you.